coming. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give you all the praise, all the honor, and the glory, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning, Lord God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that we may be praying. We thank you for the gift of life, Lord God, and our salvation. And the redemption that we have, Lord God, to be called citizens of heaven. Yes, Lord, we are a friend of Jesus. We are your children. Yes, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord, and we give you all the praise, honor, and glory for this great distinction. We know one day, Lord God, we will judge the angels. Yes. We will be in heaven with you. We will have our purposes and our jobs and our loved ones. We will be living in bliss. We can't even imagine what yes. it will be like. Yes. But we thank you, Lord, for this dual citizenship. And we look forward to seeing you, Lord God. And we ask that your spirit be in all of us, Lord God, throughout the day and forevermore. And we look forward to the continuation of our journey with you in the spirit and in person one day. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. God is so good. Yes, he is. You know, you talk about a sermon, you talk about the spirit. It's interesting, in this walk with Christ, the last thing we want to do is hold on to what we think the plan is. Because oftentimes, even when we tap into what we believe is God's will, and it appears to be a good thing, and we know in our heart and soul, this is the purpose and this is the mission. He has spoken that into us. Oftentimes in the end, when that which we saw and perceived does not come to fruition, in the midst of all of that, we then see the real purpose and the real meaning, which oftentimes is about bringing people together Growing as a group of people, learning how to share, learning how to love, learning how to strengthen one another in times of need, learning how to rejoice with one another in times of plenty. This is the work of God. This is what keeps us occupied as we are awaiting our final destination in eternity. Mm, Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God. It's not what we think. The world says, very popular saying, used to be one of my favorites. It is what it is. <laughs> Say it a lot of times. It is what it is. Well, it is what it is. But guess what? Sometimes what it is, it ain't. <laughs> because we don't know. We can't see into the future. We don't have that capability. Our minds can't handle it. And when we attempt to look into the future, we only oftentimes end up with worry, distrust, bad feelings, oh, yeah. bad thoughts, mm -hmm. and then what follows are the bad actions of all of that cascade of mm -hmm. just a uh, what do you call it, a uh, repository, our minds, of just negative thinking. When you look at the spirit of Christmas, it's truly about the giving. And it's nice that everybody that got up here today truly understands that. And I hear that from a lot of people that I meet. And that's a blessing to me, that people understand it's about the giving. And we know that Jesus did not, was not truly born during this time of the year. We understand that. You know, and science has taught us that. And let us not think that science is the enemy of our spirituality. Science only gives us knowledge. That's all it's there for. But without our spirituality, we don't have the values and the wisdom to use that knowledge to bear good fruit. It's a perfect marriage, and we must have both. 
But my point is, is that what better gift, what greater gift, let us celebrate Jesus as his birth on this day. Because he gave us the greatest gift of all kind, all time, mm -hmm. which was the gift of eternal life. Mm -hmm. And he gave his own life. He came down from being with God and divine into this human shell and lived through the insults, the degradation, the humility, the thrashing, the physical, the spiritual. He was separated from God. Yes. I, we can't imagine, we had that movie, The Passion of Christ. We can somewhat think what it was like. We can empathize, but we truly, until we went through it, and with a divine nature prior to that, which we can't understand, what he did for us, when, as scripture tells us, Romans 8, 6, while we were still sinning, he died for us, and gave his life for us. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What greater gift. So yes, I can celebrate his birth today. As the original initiator, creator of the gift of giving. To those who possibly don't deserve it in its totality. But still, I give with a pure heart. That that gift that I give may inspire them to turn to Christ, the originator of my spirit and my ability to give when others don't deserve it. When you go to Scripture, Ephesians chapter 2, it says, And you he made alive, meaning us, God made alive, who were dead, we were dead in the trespasses and sins. We were damned. In which you once walked according to the course of the world. Amen. According Amen. to the prince of the power of the air. Know that the world we live in and the prince of power of the air, Satan, okay, Amen. are responsible but now the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. All of these things we see happening, that's of these atrocities. They're of the world. They're of the prince of the power, the devil. We know where they're coming from, but we were part of that. Among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh. Yeah. Fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. <clears throat> and were by nature children of wrath just as the others. It goes on to tell us we were saved by God's grace. Once we believed. And we cannot take credit for it. It was a gift from God. We did nothing to deserve it. And the salvation that we get is not a reward for the good deeds that we do. Yeah. None of us can boast about it. But we were God's masterpiece. Created to rule the earth until Satan usurped our power. But God has a plan to put us back in that rightful position. And we will judge the angels. We will judge the angels. But yet, well, we still live in this world. And what I want to touch on to is the fact that while we are in this world, we are not to be conformists. We are not to conform to the ways of the world. That's not what we're called to do. Amen. Romans 12, 2. What does that say? Do not conform to the world. But be transformed by renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of the Lord. We have to be very careful about conforming to the world. Very careful. 
There's many images that come our way. There's many temptations that will come our way. Mm -hmm. There's many things that can distract us. The scriptures talks about the lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. All of these things can distract us. Yes, yes. But we have that born again principle. Mm -hmm. We are now born again, citizens of heaven. We have through 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, when we sin and lose our anointing, we can confess our sins, and God is just and faithful, and will forgive us our sins, and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Yeah, yeah. And we're back with the anointing. Pastor Tony gave us a good message in the morning from that word. We have to be able to commune with God first thing in the morning. Do you know that that sets the tone? We all know the difference. And when we commune with God, our burdens are now casted upon his shoulders. That's what Jesus said in Matthew 28, 30. Come to me, all who are heavy laden. Come to me. Talk to me. And I will give you rest for your souls. Cast our burdens upon him. For I am lowly in spirit and gentle in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my burden is light, and my yoke is easy. Yes, Lord. You see, when we commune with him, those burdens transfer to him. It happens on a level that we can't see, but it's real. Science hasn't truly discovered just what's happening. Let's call it the quantum level. They haven't made the connection. There's a quantum level, and that's where all this is happening. And it transfers over to him. And our load is now lightened. And now we can go out with the anointing of the Spirit. We can walk light and free. We can wake up every morning and say, my goal today is to be a blessing to everyone that I come into contact with. Yeah. A blessing. We can walk in love. Just as Jesus also loved us and gave his self life for us. We can do this. And when we think about the things that we need not think about, all we need to do at that point is now we'll start seeing the world as God and Jesus sees it. We'll see it from their perspective instead of our worldly, fleshly perspective. And we'll just ask them for what you need. God, I need this, this, I want this, I need this, ask him for it. Matthew 7, 7, asking you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find, knock, and the door shall be open. We just ask him for it. And then, we, through the Holy Spirit, remember the fruit of the Spirit, we control our thinking and reorient it and direct it to trusting God. When any thought pops into the contrary, we reroute it. And remember, we trust in the Lord. We stand on the promises. And then we leave the outcome to Him. Mm. And we walk out in the day, maintaining that communion with Christ. If you are raised by Christ, then seek those things which are above, where Christ is. Sitting at the right hand of God. Whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely and of good rapport. If there is virtue in it, if anything is praiseworthy, Philippians 4, 8 tells us to meditate on those things. That's where our thinking has to be. Yes. That's what we do. And we remember our dual citizenship. And even though we are here in this reality, and we are this time in this time, not as the conformists of the world, we also remember 
We are in eternity with God. We are simultaneously walking in eternity with God. We are told to be and know we are citizens in heaven down here temporarily. That's it. Now we know we're soldiers. Paul tells us we're a soldier. Because we're fighting a war down here for the soul. Our souls can find peace in Jesus. Yes. But there's still a harvest out there. A lot of that harvest is going to come from people with addictions. Because if you have an addiction, you're trapped in the world. That's right. And there's many forms of addiction. There's substance abuse. There's behavioral addictions. There's all sorts of addictions and mental health issues. Some of it's going to be fixed, some of it isn't. It doesn't matter. Those who are going to be saved are going to be saved. None of us can judge. None of us can point the finger. I believe everybody in this room is going to be saved. Hallelujah. And I hope they are. Yes. I pray that they will be saved. Rather than sitting around here thinking, well, no, that ain't one going to make it. No, that ain't. No, no. I used to do that, you know. That's the flesh. Mm -hmm. You see? Yeah, we're all going to be saved. We all got to strengthen one another. We all got to work together with one another. It's tough. It's hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard to do. You know, I was looking at my wife this morning. And it's funny. You know, sometimes I've been with my wife for 16 years. Praise God. You know, you can look at somebody or be with somebody for a long time, but that doesn't mean you really looked at them. Mm -hmm. You really looked at them. You know? So I tried to really look at them. And I saw something different in them. And what I saw was a person more beautiful than the person I knew 16 years ago. Oh. And I don't know if that was just me seeing some things that weren't there or if it is. Maybe she is getting more beautiful. But then I thought about the world and how the world will tell you as you're aging and you start getting older, your physical appearance isn't or can't compare to what it was 15, 20, 30 years ago. And we all fall into that trap. That's us conforming to the world. Mm -hmm. And I thought about, you know, there's the knowledge I thought about 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verse 3. You know, if I understand the mysteries, or if I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, if I have all faith and can remove all mountains, but I have not love, I am nothing. Mm -hmm. And I thought about the knowledge that I have. You can have the knowledge of love, you can know how to practice love, but at the end of the day, there's some people that just do. And they may not have all the knowledge, they may not have all the up here, but they just do. You know? And let us all strive in this season of giving to try to be that person. That person that communes with God in the morning, Mm -hmm. That person that releases all of their stuff to the Lord. That person that understands, and I hope you all get this and truly understands, that when we conform to the world and we get in our heads and we get all twisted up over things, we are fighting a battle that has already been won. Right. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. We are wrestling yes, with the sin and the flesh and the blood, and that battle has been already been won for us. Thank you, Lord. Mm -hmm. Jesus gave us the victory with his work on the cross. We have been redeemed, yes. and we are citizens, and we are living in eternity. Yes. We have nothing to fear. Perfect love cast out fear. Accept the love of God. Practice that love. And rejoice in your gift of eternal life 
and eternal love in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.